Uh, welcome everyone uh, to our second uh, participant webinar uh, sponsored by Respondit. Today we're going to go over the 10 most common mistakes participants make when applying to projects and how to avoid them. So we'll just do a few intros. Um, so my name is Jose Gallegos. I'm the head of content. I'm from Fremont, California. And fun fact, I've been to Disney World over 300 times. And that's because I used to work there at uh, Fort Wilderness Resort. It was a resort right by the Magic Kingdom. And I dressed up in a cowboy costume and would say howdy and have a magical night every day. And I'll pass it over to Kelly to introduce himself. Do you have a favorite ride at Disneyland, Jose? Yes, I would have to say Haunted Mansion. Oh, it's the best ride ever. Cool. Hi, everybody. I'm Kelly Geyer. I'm joining you from Portland, Oregon, where we do keep things weird and have the best food. Um, I uh, work for the customer success team. And my fun fact is a long time ago in my previous life, I used to own a successful catering company in Southern California. Awesome. And what were some of the your favorite types of foods or beverages that you catered? We had lots of craft cocktails, but mostly we focused on a fusion of kind of American California style food, but infused with lots of Asian influences and Thai influences. So lots of great flavors. And I worked with a super cool chef. And although I'm not uh, trained as a chef, I feel by default that I am because he taught me so much about the ingredients and cooking. And it was a great experience. So today, um, as we start this webinar, I would like to start talking about Jenga and saying, you know, if you ever played Jenga, you know how anxious it is to try to attempt to pull out uh, a piece without trying to tumble the whole tower over you start questioning whether you can stay in the game. And that's what, the whole thing that makes Jenga so exciting. So this same concept applies to Respondit and applying to screener surveys. You know, our customer success team is frequently asked, how can I get selected more often? And you're probably asking yourself, am I doing this right? Am I missing something in my profile? And our team fields a lot of questions, but sometimes we have to step in and help a participant find uh, the balance to understand all the pieces on the respondent platform. So with that said, there's a lot to consider to when applying to studies. So let's take a look at the 10 most common mistakes participants make when applying to research projects. So I'll pass it over to Kelly. All right, thanks Jose, let's dive in with number 10 in our list. Your company name and work email domain don't match. If you've seen the infamous Friends Thanksgiving episode where Rachel tries to make dessert, then you know that nothing about her trifle matched or tasted good. Watching her explain the layers was amusing, and although Joey thought it was delicious, the rest of the friends sat there trying to pretend that they enjoyed it. So your hot cooking tip for today is to remove the meat and peas from your trifle, but your hot respondent profile tip is you'll fare much better when your company name matches your work email domain. We field so many questions about the work email the verification and applying for studies. Let me explain. Let's look at the graphic. You'll see that you need a company name and email domain so that our internal mail server can verify where you work. And once your email is verified, you're eligible to apply to 10 screeners in a 24 hour period. Don't worry though, you can still apply to our general population studies until your situation changes and we can help you add and verify that work email. So in the upper part of the screen, you'll see the company name is respondent. And in the lower part of the screen, you'll see the email domain is firstname.lastname at respondent.io. The respondent.io is what's known as a high level email domain. And that's what we need to match and verify you so that you can apply to our industry professional category. And lastly, I wanna draw your attention to the verify work email link where Ross and Joey are watching Rachel create her concoction. Each time you click on that link, we send you a token to your inbox, and that token is what you use to verify your work email. If you click on it 10 times in a row, you get 10 tokens sent to your email. Only the latest token works to e verify your email address. So if you get frustrated because you've sent yourself too many tokens, reach out to customer support, send us your login, your work email that you want verified, and we'll take a look and try to get it verified for you. All right, number nine, maintain a current PayPal email address. After you complete a study, respondent thanks you, the researcher is thankful, 
and a global community is grateful for your participation and insights, whether you know it or not. And for all that gratitude, you deserve to get paid. Why? Because you earned it. We can't send a second payment to a new PayPal address until we receive some confirmation or status of the payment processed to the old email address. And because payments can take between five to eight business days to process, your updated PayPal email address ensures your payments are processed without delay. Let's take a look at the graphic. Participants are responsible for updating their PayPal email address. And it's super simple. Log in, click on edit profile, contact details, and don't forget to click save changes. We're really grateful that you're part of our community and we want you to get paid for your time. So keep that PayPal updated. Number eight, accept the invitation. If you're qualified to participate in a study, a researcher will send you an invitation. You'll get that invitation via SMS or email notification. You can check the notification for a link to the project calendar. You can click on the name of the project in the email or find the project in your profile to book a time. And you can access the booking two ways, in the project itself or in the bookings tab in the upper right hand corner of your project profile. Now I can't stress this enough. Lots of people are applying for the same projects, some before you and some after you. If you let that invitation sit in pending for about 48 hours, odds are the times that the researcher wants to meet with people will fill up. But there's a workaround. You can message the researcher and ask them to open more times on their calendar if you want to participate in the study. So try to answer and accept those invitations as soon as possible. Number seven, speaking of messages, not messaging the researcher enough. Did you know that you have your own personal message center in your project dashboard? You can't message a researcher until you're invited to a project, but here's what you can do after you accept an invitation. You can cancel and reschedule your booking. You can let the researcher know that there's no bookings available and ask for more times to be opened. You can ask questions. You can determine if you need to have your laptop, if your camera should be on, and if the session will be recorded because you wanna look good when you're being interviewed. You can add attachments like images or video. You can leave feedback for the researcher and you can follow up with your uh, payment questions to see when your payment will be processed. And researchers are more likely to respond if you're a champ. Communicative, honest, accountable, mindful, and professional. But please just don't send anything weird. Number six, do you ever sit and look at your profile and you think something's missing here and you don't know what it is? Your respondent profile serves two purposes. It provides essential information to match you to the best studies. And it offers researchers a glimpse into who you are when qualifying you to participate in the study. And so you think, why am I not getting selected? Let's take a look at the graphic. If you ever see at the top of your profile dashboard, we need a few more things from you. That's a prompt from a respondent asking you to complete as much of your profile as possible so we can match you to the best studies. So it's really just a matter of housekeeping. You don't need to run around all hectic like Sylvester, but the lesson here is more is better. All right, number five, using the help center. Did you know that respondent has a robust and very informative help center? And what does it do? It offers endless empowerment. It gives you the how and the when and the where. It offers as a self-serve tool for discovery and success. And most of all, our help center is so helpful that many times it can help you solve an issue without ever reaching out to customer support or the researcher. When in doubt, we're here for you. But remember, learning is a treasure that will follow its owner everywhere. And while you're there, you can leave feedback to help make our help center better. So please visit. Number four, it's in the details. No two screeners are created equal, and that's sweet, because that means there's a lot of availability and lots of screeners for everyone to apply to. But there's a few things to consider, like the title of the project and the project details are a recipe, and the questions you answer 
those are the ingredients. So ask yourself, what are the project's expectations? Are you a good fit for the project? Can you honestly answer each question based on the project details? Is it an, an unmoderated study? Is it a diary study? Is it a group study? Or is it a one-on-one -on -one interview with the researcher? And do you know what those methodologies are? We have that information in our help center. When you get invited and you meet with the researcher and you start your interview and you haven't read what's in the details of the project, we do not want you to come out thinking, I don't know what I expected. So read the details, but when in doubt, reach out to customer service because we can help guide you through those details and make sure it's the right project that you can apply for. All right, number three, honesty all at once and everywhere. Respondent lives by the belief that honesty and transparency is what makes our platform successful. So don't be fictional, don't fabricate, don't be inaccurate, don't misrepresent, and don't mislead. Never say what you think the researcher wants you to say. Please don't Google the screener question answers. They will know. Speak only what you know to when meeting with the researcher. If your screener survey answers don't match what the researcher is asking you, that's a problem. And lastly, polish up your social media. If you incorporate your LinkedIn to your respondent profile, you're giving visibility to the researcher of who you are, where you work, what your skills are and who you network with. And that tells the researcher a lot about who you are when you're answering those screener survey questions. So the tip here is, if you want that invite, your screener survey answer should always match who you say you are. Number two, use the filter and search for better project matches. Some of you watching may have received an email from respondent recently. If not, no worries, we're gonna cover that information in this slide. Your respondent dashboard is the place to check daily to find research studies that fit your unique interests. Become a dashboard power user to find the projects that fit you. You get three or 10 screener submissions a day, so make them count. Filter projects to select industry professional or general population projects and the amount of time and compensation you're willing to work with. Search projects by keyword that align with your work, lifestyle, and interests. Sort projects by recency, relevance, incentive, or time to help respondent decide which projects you should see first in the project dashboard. Remember, it's all in the details and it's all about honesty. When you're a dashboard power user, you'll apply to just the right screeners. And drum roll please, number one in our 10 most common mistakes participants make when applying to survey screeners is the survey screener status is submitted. Remember slide four was all about the details? Here's a detail we cannot overlook. A submitted screener is not a guaranteed spot in a research study, nor does it pay an incentive. However, when you submit a screener survey, you are sharing with the researcher many, many things, including your skills, your demographics, where you live, your willingness to participate, your experiences, and your availability. Now I know a lot of you feel like you see a lot of submitted statuses in your dashboard, but if you take to heart all the things that we've shared with you today and you keep submitting screeners based on who you are and be honest and transparent, those submissions will turn into invitations. I think we're gonna turn it over to some questions and answers with Jose, take it away. Okay, great, thank you, Kelly. All right, everyone, so it's time for Q&A. So if you have any questions, please drop them now uh, so we can answer them. Um, so we'll start going through some of the questions that we've been receiving over the presentation. So the first uh, uh, question is from Tim asking, how important is a video introduction? Tim, great question. So think of your profile as a one-dimensional view. Think of your LinkedIn as a two-dimensional view, but think of your video introduction as really shining, a three-dimensional view of your nuances, how you talk, how you would be interviewed if you were applying for a job. It's super important to take that 60 second video and make yourself shine. Talk about yourself, sell yourself, so that the researcher can see exactly who you are. That's an awesome question. And if you wanna reach out to customer support, we have some tips to make your video shine. Great, thank you. So next question is, 
why do you need a work email? Do you actually call the job? That's from Lori. No, no, Lori, we never, ever, ever share work emails with our researchers. All we use it for is to verify where you work so that you can apply to our industry professional category. So if you have questions about the work email itself, we have a couple help center articles, but I highly recommend you reach out to our customer success team so that we can answer those detailed questions that you have if you're trying to get it verified or add it to your profile and we'll work it out for you. Great question. Great, thank you. Next question is, I am uh, from Melissa. I'm not comfortable adding my work email address. If I leave it blank, how much is it hurting me? That's a great question. So at this time, the work email is required so that you can apply to the industry professional studies. So I would suggest that the workaround is that you look at the industries and the skills, possibly adding a social media account, anything else that would represent who you are so that the researcher has a glimpse into who you are. It, right now it's gonna keep you from applying to those industry professional studies, but um, we have lots of tips to make your profile shine. I would also reach out to customer support so we can have a more detailed conversation about um, how we can help. Okay, great. We have another question regarding working emails. Is response uh, is respondent basically for working people only? No, respondent is a global research platform. So as long as you sign up with an email address and you add your PayPal email address, you get those three screener submissions per day. So anyone can apply to research, right? And you can get paid for your participation. So sign up with an account. We've got some great information to help you sign up. It's like a one sheet that gives you all the information you need. Again, reach out to customer service so that we can get you signed up and get you, uh, start uh, applying to those screeners. Make some money. Great. Uh, we have a question from Rose asking, what are the major areas of research does respondent major in? Wow, everything you can imagine. So our clients deal with products that you use on a daily basis, um, technology, um, transportation, you name it. Um, a really great way to see what we specialize in, which aside from everything, is to go to the search bar in your project dashboard and type in keywords. So let's say you type in restaurants. You'll see all the projects that are related to restaurants or food service. Um, type in software engineer and you'll see all the studies that are uh, relevant to that particular job. So really you can use the filter to kind of see the patterns that we have and the kinds and types of research that's available for our participants. Great. Uh, next question is from Steven. How long does it take to review screeners? Is there a maximum duration? That's a great question. We figure it takes about five days. So consider um, when you apply for a job, you submit your resume and a recruiter has to kind of look through all of those resumes, right? So you've submitted your resume, a screener survey, and the researcher needs time to see how qualified you are based on the answers. Now, some of the screeners are very easy, right? You'll answer like yes or no, or basic text questions. Others are, are longer, maybe 20 questions. They have to read through all of that information, but five days is about the mark. Again, reach out to customer support if you have questions about a submitted screener, but always give it about the five day mark. Great question. Dawn is asking, what has been the highest paid incentive so far? Ooh, great question. Um, I think I've seen four hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Lori is asking. Um, I hear a lot when the applicant answers the questions, they still don't get it. This includes age, race, industry. All of their answers are truthful, and yet they are not selected. Why is that? Those are demographics. So this is really awesome question. Um, you are qualified based on certain demographics. So that can be age, gender, job, location. There's lots of ethnicity. There's lots of demographics. Um, I know it can seem like you're not being accepted, but there can be a demographic embedded in the survey that you don't see. These are, these particulars guide the project. So I know it's defeating because you've used that screener survey and you didn't quite hit the demographic. The good news is we've had lots of discussions around demographics. And so keep applying, keep sending us feedback, always send us screenshots. If you ever apply to a screener or you get a message when you're trying to apply to a screener, send us a screenshot so we can diagnose it. And then we can reach back out to you and kind of let you know, because maybe it's 
something going on on the researcher side or the or the screener's not working correctly and we need to reach out to the researcher and get that corrected so that participants can apply. When in doubt, reach out. Okay, great. Uh, next question is from Rohit uh, asking, do clients fill a survey for each screener to give you feedback after each survey is complete? How do I know what my feedback is so far? We don't currently have a feedback network from the screener survey submission. However, you can ask for feedback after you've been invited. And what I would suggest, that message center is really powerful for participants. So at any stage of the project, let's say you get invited and then you book a time and the researcher reaches out and asks you a few questions. Let them know up front that by the end of the study, you'd like to sit for a minute and just get some feedback or just have them send you a message, a paragraph of how you did. We don't have anything in the uh, submission part, but you can definitely ask for feedback during or after the project. Great. Uh, Omni is asking, I've taken screeners where there are 20 questions in total, and I've gotten through three before the screener ends. Does that mean I'm disqualified for the project? Yes. There are some tricks that can be embedded into a screener survey that can end the screener if you don't qualify based on some of the demographics. So don't be discouraged. Um, researchers are looking for a particular set of people. So when the screener ends, it just means that you didn't answer that quite. It's not that you answered incorrectly. It means that you probably don't match for that particular project. Again, reach out to customer support. We can kind of give you some guidance if we see anything funny. Okay, great. Um, we just have a few more because uh, we are running out of time. Uh, let's see. Uh, can you give an insight to which category gets the best project or number of projects? I think we just touched on this, right, Kelly? Yeah, I would search. Um, so if you search for restaurants or software engineers, you're going to see the numbers populate up in the corner. So many screeners of that keyword out of the total number that are on the platform, right? So you search restaurant and it says 30 out of 506. That means there's 30 restaurant-based surveys available. Again, use keywords. I couldn't give you like a theme, but I think you can search themes very easily. Think of your skills, your industries, and what you're good at and what you like to do, and then search those keywords to kind of populate larger groups of studies that are available. Okay, great. Um, I think we'll have one more question um, from Kim. I always try to answer uh, the questions with lots of thought. Should uh, that make a difference? I would thought it would help, but sometimes I don't get many invites. Can you read that question again? Sure. I always try to answer the questions with lots of thought, um, but should that make a difference? Um, I would think so, but I don't get many invites because of that. That's a great question. Like, how much is too much? Um, think of Think of those kinds of questions as an elevator pitch. If you had to go up 50 floors and you had just that amount of time to tell the researcher who you are and why you're a good fit, put it in that block. I think really concise information that matches the project details. It sounds like you're giving it a lot of thought. Again, this is a discussion we should have in customer service where you kind of come to us with an example so that we can see what you're providing in a screener survey and maybe give you some guidance but kind of use the elevator pitch as a way to sell yourself and really hone in on what the, the researcher is asking. Because if you kind of go off theme, it's sort of like if a recruiter is scanning resumes for keywords, that's kind of what they're doing in the screener survey. They're looking for particular ways of how you're presenting yourself. I know it's kind of a not an answer to your question, but there's so many nuances to each screener survey. But again, reach out to us. We're more than happy to help you. Okay, great. Um, so folks, we are out of time, but we will follow up with you if your question didn't get answered. So uh, we have everyone's names um, and emails and your question. So we'll make sure to have our uh, customer success uh, uh, team to reach out um, to answer that. So thank you for everyone. Um, so we wanna remind everyone that our um, customer support team is here to assist you. Um, you can check out our help, our help center at help.respondent.io to read articles. Uh, you can send us a live chat or email us at support at respondent.io. Thank you everyone for joining uh, this webinar. Uh, we do have one next month on how, uh, focusing on five, particip five participants share how they achieve success on Respondent. 
Uh, Kelly did want to share some uh, closing thoughts. So go ahead, Kelly. Thanks, Jose. Congratulations to our winners today and for allowing me to share my dog, Chloe, with you. It was a really fun presentation. I'm so glad you were all here today. Our customer success team is ready to field your questions. We want to help eliminate a lot of these mistakes. So if you learned anything today and you have burning questions that you want to go through, reach out to us on the chat. We're ready to um, answer them for you and help you get those projects and search those keywords and start making that extra income. So thanks for being with us today.